Imagine you lived in an island and when it rained heavily, your home along with other homes and the island you lived in drowned. What would your plight be? Very similarly, Dweepa by Norbert D'Souza, popularly known as Sanna D'Souza, is a novel about droning. The droning of an island, the droning of home, droning of traditions, emotions and a lot of other things. Yes, I know that you're here searching for the English explanation of Dweepa by Nadi D'Souza and there aren't many videos available, so you can consider this video as one of its kind. In today's video, we will be discussing about the introduction of the author Nadi Souza, summary of uh, the novel Dweepa, uh, what are the background details that you need to study. Following it, we will discuss the storyline of Dweepa, which means the train of incidents from the beginning till end. And at last, we will look at the prominent themes uh, of the novel Dweepa by Nadi Souza. And I request you to stay tuned till the last of this video because this video is truly going to be beneficial. Norbert D'Souza, popularly known as Na D'Souza, is a writer and essayist of Kannada language. He was born on 6th June 1937 in Sagara, okay, Shimoga the Malnad region of Karnataka. He has written more than 40 novels, many short stories, plays and literature for children. He has received Central Sahitya Academy's Bala Sahitya Puraskar for his children novel Mulugadeya Urige Bandavago. If you go through the names of his different works, novels, essays, short stories, many of them, the theme of many of these writings revolve around the idea of drowning. The place where he comes from plays a very uh, important goal in the storyline that he selects. Okay, and we will discuss this in the later part of this video. Two of his novels, Dweepa and Kardina Binki, were made into motion pictures and won national level awards. Accolades Karnataka Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1993, Karnataka Rajyotsava Award in the year 1998, Alwas Nurisigi Award 2006, Honorary Doctorate, DLIT by Kuempu University. Here is a little fact that you need to know. The English translation of Dweepa is done by Sushila Punita and it is published by Oxford University Press. Oxford University Press had taken up a series of novella translations. What is a novella? Novella is something in simple words which is bigger than a short story and smaller than an actual novel. So we call it novella. Something like this. This is a novella and it is somewhere around 80, 70, 80 pages in length. And Oxford beautifully named it as Oxford Novella Series. I tried to lay my hand on the English translation of Dweepa, but it was so difficult. I went on to Amazon, to Flipkart, and I almost walked into every other bookstore in my locality, but I could not find the English version of it right now. I will be attaching the links of uh, English version book in the description box below. Whenever you check this, maybe after a year or two, you may find the book. And I was so happy because of this, I got an opportunity to read the original uh, writing, which means in original language, that is in Canada. Now, the added advantage of reading a novel in its original language is you get the taste, uh, the real recipe of the book, which is missing in the translations, majority of the translations, not all. So here is Dweepa by Nadi Souza. Nadi Souza's native place has a profound impact in majority of his writings. Sagara in Shimoga, Linganamaki Dam across the Sharavati River is the primary theme of many of his writings. Let us crisply look into the background uh, topic that we need to study for this, uh, which is about Linganmaki Dam. Linganmaki Dam was constructed in the year 1964 across the river Sharavati. Now, what is a dam? Basically, a river, river would be flowing by and you construct a dam across it so that you can store water inside the dam. The Linganmaki Dam is a significant dam located on the Sharavati River in the state of Karnataka, India. It is constructed in the Shimoga district and is considered one of the major hydroelectric projects in the region. The dam plays a vital role in the irrigation and power generation for the surrounding areas. It is said that around 99 villages of Sagara and 77 villages of Hosanagara were drowned in the process of construction of Linganmaki Dam. 
and around 70 km of area, land area, was drowned in the process. The construction of Linganmaki Dam was a boon to lakhs of citizens, but it was also a nightmare to thousands of inhabitants. If you're wondering why is he talking so much about Linganmaki Dam, about Shimoga, I want to discuss about Dripa. It is because this is very important when you discuss, when you critically analyze the novel. Why? Let me read it out for you. The novel Dwipa, written by Na D'Souza, provides a fictional account of the Linganmaki Dam and its impact on the lives of people residing in the surrounding areas. The story revolves around the displacement and struggles faced by the inhabitants of the Mallard region due to the dam's construction. The novel depicts the serene and harmonious life of the people who have been living in the region for generations. Their lives revolve around the lush green forests, beautiful landscapes, and the river Sharawat. However, as the dam's construction progresses, their homes and villages get submerged under the rising waters of the Linganmaki Reservoir. The characters in Dwipa represent the collective voice of the displaced people, their sorrows, and their determination to preserve their culture and identity. The novel beautifully captures their emotional struggles and the conflicts they face as they are forced to adopt to a new way of life. It also highlights the socio-economic impact of large-scale dam projects on the lives of the marginalized communities. Dwipa provides a poignant portrayal of human cost of development and the complex relationship between humans and nature. It raises important questions about the ethics of progress and the need to balance economic growth with environmental and social sustainability. Overall, the Linganmaki Dam and its depiction in the novel Dwipa shed light on the profound impact of large infrastructure projects on the lives of local communities, highlighting the importance of considering the human and environmental consequences of such developments. Now, this reminds me of a beautiful line from the novel. Well, since I read the Kannada novel, this is my own translation of those words. Sharavati used to flow at her ease, but now, since there was a blockade, it started to rise. If we obstruct the smooth flow of nature, nature distracts us. Tell me that was a good translation. So good translation. Thank you. Now, the location of this novel where the entire story revolves around is Hosamane Halli, new home village, Hosamane Halli. Uh, this reminds me of a joke. A person was asked, what's your name? And he wanted to speak in English, so he says, my name is Kamukala. And he asks, okay, uh, sorry, uh, I did not get you. Kamukala. Uh, sorry? Ba Banna Kamukala. Yenta Magaya. Okay, there are some other names. Try guessing it. Father brother. Father brother. Yes. Appanna. Appanna. Brother, father. And Appa. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's move ahead. Hosamane Halli is a place which is situated somewhere in between the river. Now, this is not an island. There are ways to go to the island. There are some pathways through which uh, people can walk and reach Hosamane Halli. Okay. But... When it rains, during the rainy seasons, all the gateways to that village are closed. Okay, it gets drowned. The the ways, the roads through which they come to Osamane Ali are drowned. And then it becomes a dwipa. It becomes an island during the rainy seasons. Let us go through the character sketch of dwipa. Characters involved in the novel. Initially, when the novel begins, there are five families who live in Osamane Ali. Two are rich families. Two are poor families who are the workers, who are the laborers of these two rich persons. And then there is Ganpaya, who is a middle class mediocre person. And he is the protagonist of this novel. Parameshwarappa and his family. Hiramba Hegde and his family. Hala and Baira are the laborers who work for Parameshwarappa and Hiramba Hegde. Ganapaya is the protagonist of this novel. Ganapaya had a family. Name of Ganapaya's wife is Nagavin. Okay, please to remember the name Nagavin. He had an old aged deceased father who eventually dies in the novel. And then there is Krishnaya. And animals also play a very important role. Animals have symbols. Okay, animals are used as symbols here. 
uh, there is a tiger that comes into the picture in the climax of the novel and then there is belly dana okay belly dana let us move ahead with the summary of the novel the part that you were waiting for students and viewers here is a quick disclaimer you can take screenshots of the novels that i display on screen you can write it down in your uh, notes and you can use it as your own notes you can use it for the purpose of studying okay i will not be attaching any pdfs as and such because we we'll become too lazy with it i kindly request you to, if possible write it down because writing is a very good habit of remembering things dweepa is a kannada novel written by nadi souza it was translated into english by sushila punita The story revolves around the lives of the people residing in an island village called Hosamani, situated on the banks of the river Sharavati in the Western Ghats of Karnataka, India. The novel highlights the struggles faced by the villagers when the government decides to construct Linganmakki Dam across the river Sharavati, which would lead to the submersion of their village. The island is their ancestral home, and the impending threat of displacement deeply affects the lives of the villagers. The central characters of the novel are Ganpaya, his wife Nagaveni, and Krishnaya. Ganpaya and Nagaveni lead a simple and contented life on the island, relying on farming as their livelihood. However, as the government initiates the dam project, the villagers are forced to confront the possibility of losing their homes, their ancestral property, and their way of life. The novel delves into the complexities of the villagers' emotions as they grapple with the impending change. It explores themes of loss, marital restrictions, nostalgia, and the fight to preserve one's identity in the face of external forces. The characters undergo personal transformations as they experience the submersion of their homeland. Through vivid descriptions and powerful storytelling, Dweepa portrays the deep connection between humans and environment, emphasizing the importance of preserving nature and protecting the cultural heritage tied to a place. The novel reflects the conflicts arising from development projects that bring progress but also disrupt the lives of communities deeply rooted in their land. It has been adopted into a movie by Girish Kasaravalli and I know students I know that you will watch a movie rather than listening to a lecture so I will be attaching the link of that movie you can directly go to YouTube and search for Dweepa movie you will find the movie there a little changes have been made from the original text to the movie so it is also important that you study the novel if you cannot study the novel here I am explaining it to you The link of the movie will be attached in the description box below. You can check it out after watching this video. Thank you. Here is a quick storyline of the novel. Initially, when it was announced that people of Osamani Hilly had to migrate to a city space, they had to get their files signed for compensation by the government. All the families, that is, the family of Parameshwaraya and Hegamba Hilly, got their files signed by paying bribe by corrupting. Okay. Uh, not actually by corrupting they had to pay the bribe to get their files signed but grandpaya did not have enough money to pay for bribes and so his file wasn't yet uh, found they the officials told him that his file was missing from the records geographical description of hosamane hilly now hosamane hilly is quite like an island but there are landways uh, there are some ways to go which you can pass the river during summer and go to an other uh, city space The neighboring villages. The names of the neighboring villages are Aralagodu, Hiremana, and Talaguppa. On one side of Hosamane Hilly was Sharavati River flowing, and on the other side was a small hillock, a very small sort of mountain, and it was called as Sita Parvat. The author also gives a slight touch uh, to the ancient days, and he tells when Rama, Lakshmana, and Sita uh, were on their voyage. they came to this space and they rested on the top for a day or two and beneath sita parvata there are three supari plantations three uh, agricultural lands and five families living together during summer season it's easy to travel from hosamane hilly to other villages but when it rains during the monsoon season during the rainy seasons they are isolated from other parts of the city space they had to get prepared priorly if the monsoon was to arrive they had to stock all the goods all the necessity food items and then they had to relax for the next two months i mean they had to struggle for the next two months When the construction of Linganmakki Dam was announced, everyone migrated to the outer space. Everyone went into the city areas except 
then Paya's family. There are two little fun incidents uh, mentioned here. Belly, the cow gets uh, lost somewhere and then they had to climb Sita Parvata to find her. And uh, the husband and wife get a little romantic there. Little. Okay. Uh, that, that's all. Little. Their relationship is not that flowery. Okay. And we understand this when Krishnaya gets into the picture. When Krishnaya gets into the picture, Ganpaya and Krishnaya, they have a sort of conflict because Nagavini starts getting attracted towards Krishna. Yeah? And when when will this happen is because when you are not happy with your marital life. And Nagavini's accent is funny. If you know Kannada, whenever she had to say something, she begins with how the how the how the now that is the beauty of reading literature in its uh, original form. You get to know the culture, you get to know the tradition, you get to know the customs. You know, to you get to know the accent of uh, the characters uh, in, to its fullest sense. Krishna's father was an old aged man. He was uh, deceased. So he did not do much of the work. He used to sit inside the home. Uh, he used to eat medicines. And uh, there is a beautiful description of life from his perspective uh, in the novel where he tells when he was young, he was equal to 100 laborers. But today he couldn't walk. That is how life uh, shows us its different faces. When you are, when we are young, we have energy. We have, we, we can do all our tasks by ourselves. But, but when we are old, all they do is wait for death. And eventually he dies. Here is a beautiful symphony of nature that is described, which I truly liked. Ganpaya's father was a symbol of tradition. He was the person who lived in this uh, village for Samane Halli from a very long period of time. Though everyone migrated to other spaces, he did not want it to live his native. He is a symbol of tradition. And when he dies, the nature also comes into flow with, uh, comes in harmony with him. During his cremation process, from the moment when, when the wood was piled up, uh, he was fired and till his cremation was done, till the entire uh, uh, corpse was burnt, it did not rain. It was a heavy rainy season, but it did not rain uh, till his cremation was done. And once he was cremated, it started to rain again. Uh, the author has tried to bring in the picture of natural uh, uh, harmony, saying uh, nature always plays melodies to those who loved her. Now Krishnaya is already introduced. Krishnaya was basically an orphan, uh, a poor boy who was uh, sheltered by Nagaveni's father. Okay, And so they were good friends uh, from a very young age. They were uh, very good friends. They played together. They stayed together. But when Nagaveni grew up, by the time they had also started uh, getting attracted to each other. But Nagaveni was uh, married uh, to Ganpaya. And from that moment, Krishnaya was always disheartened. But uh, there is also this picture that they always try to maintain their limits. They always try to restrict themselves to the customs and traditions of marriage. Nagavini tried to avoid him. Krishnaya tried to avoid her. But consequences were such that when it uh, rained heavily, they wanted some laborers. Uh, Ganpaya and Nagavini wanted some laborers for their uh, place, for their home, for their farm. Krishnaya was being called. Even though they meet after a very long period of time, Krishnaya tries to avoid her to the best. And even Nagavini tries to control her emotions, tries to control her desires. But eventually, one fine night, they get intimate. Now, one of the biggest themes of this novel is a symbolization of human emotions to nature. Okay. Now, River Shagavati used to always keep flowing. But when the dam was constructed, it started to become still. It is symbolized to human emotions as well. The description of the night when they got intimate is also very powerfully evoked that the Sharavati river, which was still for a very long period of time, it started to rain very heavily and Sharavati just flowed. It, it, it went on flowing. Now, when Krishnaya and Nagavini get uh, intimate, Krishnaya feels regretful for uh, doing this. Okay, He feels a sort of guilt. So what he does is he just decides to get up and walk away from their life. He decides to go back to his place. Now he cannot go back by the means of land. Why? Because it's Dweepa. The land they lived in has become a Dweepa. They have been isolated. He couldn't uh, walk. So what he decides is, I know how to swim. So what will I do? I will just jump from Sita Parvata. I will swim and I will just uh, get out uh, from this place. So he gets up early in the morning. He runs. He jumps into the water and he goes. When he turns back, he sees 
Nagavan is standing there. He looks at him, a glimpse. He controls his emotions and he starts to swim. But after a while, when he looks again, when he looks back, Nagavan isn't there. She's on water. She has jumped into the water. She wanted to run away with Krishnaya, but she doesn't know how to swim. She starts to drown. Krishnaya comes back to save her. And then there are some bubbles which are uh, uh, flowing on water, which means he tries to save her, but both of them drown. Ganpaya is standing there on top of uh, the hill and he's watching all this. And he doesn't react. He doesn't help them. Because he has been lost and he thinks, what have I turned into? I just saw two people drowning and I didn't help them. He simply walks back to his home and on his way home, he sees a tiger. The tiger just bounces on him and kills him. These animals also have a very uh, important note to carry. Animals lived in their own space. When the dam was constructed, the water came into their area and they had uh, to move to the space of uh, uh, human existence. Where the humans lived, the animals started to evade their space. Everyone, all the characters die at the end of this novel. So do we call this novel a tragic novel? I don't know, but this novel is definitely a thought-provoking novel. Uh, as we say, literature is a depiction of reality. Literature is a mirror of reality. Na D'Souza, Nobu D'Souza has uh, tried to picture, he has tried to depict the harsh realities faced by people uh, during uh, the construction of Linyan Makila Dam and the psychological turmoil, the turmoil of emotions, uh, the roller coaster of emotions that uh, revolve around the lives of these characters is also being depicted very well. Here are some of the important themes. The explanation of this has been already discussed, but just uh, some end points, some pointers for you to remember. Human emotions are symbolized with nature, symbolization of human emotions and nature, uh, stagnancy of the river, migration, adopting uh, modernity, etc. are some of the important themes. That is Dwipa for you. Uh, I know it's a little ruptured. It is broken into pieces. The pieces are here and there. The dots will eventually connect when you read the novel. And if you couldn't read the novel, that's absolutely fine. This is all the novel contains. But I repeat, only when you read the novel, you will truly understand the complete meaning of it. And to those of you who are young readers who have just started to read, I think uh, Dwipa is a very quick, short read, which you can finish off in a couple of hours. So please try reading the novel. And if you are a movie geek, uh, if you want to watch the visual depiction of this, you can also watch the movie. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for tuning till the last of this video. Thank you so much for compromising with the audio quality. I hope uh, this video helps you. Until next time, keep smiling, keep learning.